Hello all. So now we have discussed cardiac physiology. Uh, we are now going to discuss actually ECG electrocardiogram. Okay. So first of all, what is ECG? It provides a graphic record of the electrical activity of the heart, especially the cardiac cycle. Okay. It is usually recorded on a graph paper divided into 1 mm square grid like boxes. So what is 1 mm square grid like boxes? So ECG paper has two types of boxes, this small box and this one large box. Okay. Okay. So this small box is has the area of 1 mm square that is horizontally it is 1 mm and vertically it is 1 mm fine so on this ecg paper the horizontal axis shows the duration or time and vertical axis shows amplitude okay which will be in milli volt okay so for 1 mm of this the small box what is the duration of 1 mm it is 0 0.04 milli uh, 0 0.04 second that is 40 milliseconds and this 1 mm of amplitude is equal to 0.1 millivolt. Okay. So now as you can see this large box is made up of 25 small boxes. So vertically it is 5 boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And horizontally it is 5 boxes. Right. So we have to find out the duration of one large box. Okay. So duration of one large box will be. So one large box has. 5 small boxes, 5 into 0 0.04 seconds. So that will be 0.2 seconds. Okay, clear? And one large box of amplitude has 5 boxes into 0.1 millivolt. So it will be 0.5 millivolt. So one small large box will be having the duration on the horizontal axis of 0.2 seconds and amplitude of 0.5 millivolt. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now we'll go ahead. So how to record ECG? How do we record ECG? So in ECG, we are actually providing, this is actually a surface ECG. So we are providing electrodes, electrodes on the surface of the body. So where will you keep those electrodes? We call it leads. Okay. So there are two types of leads. One is limb leads and other is chest or precordial leads. I'll show you the diagram in the next slide. Okay. There are six chest leads and six limb leads. Limb leads is divided into two parts, three standard leads and three augmented leads. It's very easy to remember this. Three standard is named as one, two and three. Three augmented is, whenever there is augmented, it has A uh, bit before, that is A as a prefix. So AVR, AVR is put, uh, uh, AVR is actually right upper limb. AVL is left upper limb and AVF is left lower limb. Okay. So wherever there is A, it is an augmented lead. And six chest leads that is V1 to V6. Normally there are six chest leads. We are adding some leads that I will show in the next diagram. Normally we are using the speed of 25 mm per second. Okay. The speed of the ECG. The speed of the, uh, the cycles will be 25 mm per second. Sometimes we use 50 mm per second. That I will discuss when we will discuss the pathologies. Okay. So as you can see in this diagram, this is the right side of the patient. This is the left side of the patient. So normally we keep 6 chest leads. That is V1 to V6. Right. So V1 will be on the right side of the sternum. And V2 to V6 will be on the left side of the sternum. So this is how you put the chest leads whenever you do the ECG. For now, this V1 to V4, so there is a septa, there is an interventricular septa here. So this V1 to V4 will give us an idea about anteroseptal wall, especially of left ventricle. Okay, so as you can see, so basically in ECG, left ventricle is more prominent than right ventricle because it has more muscle mass, it is strongly contracting. So ECG is always recording the strongest uh, current it is getting. Okay. So, so strongest strongest electrical current it is getting and that is of left, vent left ventricle. So we are going to focus more on left ventricle on this. Okay. So V1 to V4 is giving us an idea about anteroseptal wall of left ventricle. This is important to this walls and this leads are important to know when we will uh, discuss myocardial infarction. So we 
diagnose the infarction like which wall is infected uh, in mi by using the by seeing the leads by seeing the leads on the ecg okay so not always you need angiography right and from this v3 to v6 is anterolateral wall okay because v5 and v6 are going laterally as you can see in this diagram this is a lateral wall okay so v3 to v6 will be anterolateral wall okay now one okay so these are your uh, limb leads this is, this we discussed chest leads one thing we have to discuss is to see the right wall sometimes you have to see the right wall also there is a right wall mi also so for uh, to see the right wall mi we have to see this v3 v4 r as you can see the we have to keep two two chest leads on the right side and to see sometimes you have to also see posterior wall of the left ventricle so that we sometimes here keep v7 and v8 this gives us an idea about posterior wall of the left ventricle now we are going to uh, talk about uh, limb leads so this is the this is a vector diagram that we usually draw to understand this limb leads okay so as you can see lead 1 is here okay at 0 degree lead 2 plus 60 lead 3 is plus 120 and avf is plus 90 avr is as i told you it's right foot it's going in the direction of right foot okay sorry uh, avr no 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 sorry AVF is going in the direction of left foot, AVL is going in the direction of left uh, arm, and AVR is going in the direction of right arm. Okay, so this AVR has an opposite vector. Okay, that is so AVR normally is minus 150 degree. Its opposite vector is plus 60, 30 degree. That is not important for you. Now I just wanted to here we are going to discuss something about walls. Okay, so again as you can see. this one and avl is on the showing us the lateral side of the left ventricle so one avl again along with v5 v6 is response we will be able to see the lateral wall of ventricle left ventricle okay this as you can see 2 3 avf is in the inferior direction okay it's in the lower part of the heart so this 2 3 avf gives us an idea about inferior wall of left ventricle so this is all this walls we have to understand by seeing the ecg for mi okay so that's how we diagnose which wall is infected okay again so i think i have discussed the walls now i want to discuss electrical excess of heart so i'll uh, in the next slide i'll uh, discuss what is electrical excess so basically we are going to discuss depolarization of the heart so electrical excess is the uh, is the summation of the Uh, current summation of the current direction of the current that is going in the heart so normally the electrical excess the summation of the current okay i told you left ventricle will always be predominant so as you can see the normal excess is between uh, is between minus 30 degree and plus 90 degree okay so between avl and avf is the normal excess so normally excess is in the direction of lead 2 okay so that is the major lead we'll be discussing because it gives us an idea about more idea about the actually the summation of the excess the summation of the current of the heart now as you can see if the uh, excess is between minus 30 to minus degree minus 90 degree it will be left excess deviation lad we'll discuss this in the next video if it is between plus 90 to 180 degree it will be right excess deviation and if it is between uh, 180 degree and minus 90 degree it is extreme ex excess deviation just remember this degrees it is important this picture is really good to understand this okay so normal excess normal electrical excess of the heart is between minus 30 degree to plus 90 degree okay in the direction of lead 2 okay so wall antero septal wall is v1 to v4 antero lateral wall is v3 to v6 okay or v2 to v6 then uh, only lateral wall if you want to see of ventricle is 1 avl and v5 v6 posterior wall if you have to see you have to see v7 v8 right wall if you have to see you have to see v1 v2 along with v3 r v4 r okay and inferior wall as you can see this is in the inferior direction like lower direction to so 2 3 avf is giving us an idea about the inferior wall i hope i am clear about this now we are going to discuss how does this work okay so for example first we are going to discuss depolarization okay so depolarization is the uh, positivity of the cell membrane so for example there are two cells this is one cell this is another cell okay 
if first of all this is getting depolarized then this is getting depolarized okay so when this cell is getting depolarized this will be relatively negative okay so the wave of depolarization that is a positive wave is going from the if this is the right side this is, this is the left side so the positive wave or the wave of depolarization is going from the right side to the left side so if an electrode electrode is on this side on the left side okay then it will give us a positive deflection or positive wave this is very important to understand if a positive wave or depolarization wave is going in the direction of the electrode that electrode or that lead will show a positive deflection okay opposite to it the right side the up uh, the lead that is opposite to that lead will show a negative deflection i'll give you an example okay but this is something basic that you have to understand again in repolarization it's opposite okay so first of all this is getting repolarization repolarization is coming back to the negative uh, uh, millivolt right so i told you that potassium efflux will happen so positivity inside the cell decreases and becomes negative that cell membrane potential becomes negative okay so for example this is the first cell that is getting negative now it travels in another in the direction of another cell which becomes neg negative so obviously this has the, the repolarization is over so this cell is less negative that is more positive than this so the if the electrode is here in on this side okay which is getting more negative will be showing a negative deflection and the that is lead okay this lead will show the negative deflection and the opposite lead will show a positive deflection okay so this is important to understand the uh, how the waves are going positive negative when we'll discuss pqrs okay so this is something very basic okay now one thing you have to understand now we'll understand how the uh, impulse is going in the heart as you can see it starts i have already discussed in the previous video the physiology it starts from the sa node it goes in the direction of the apex of the heart so as i told you right the impulse is going towards the apex of the heart by using all the bundle branches purkinje fibers and then it is taking a u turn and going towards the base of the heart okay so this is the base and this is the apex okay so what will happen in lead 2 okay this is something i have okay so uh, the direction of the impulse is going from sa node to the apex and going to the back to the base just remember this and one more thing the depolarization in ventricles okay it goes from endocardium to epicardium you know there are three layers endocardium myocardium and epicardium so the depolarization wave goes from endocardium to epicardium and repolarization wave goes from epicardium to endocardium reverse in the reverse direction it goes reverse of the depolarization so this is important to understand so as you know the electrodes are on the surface okay so if the depolarization is going from endocardium to epicardium that is it is going in the direction of the electrode so it will be positive and repolarization that is the negative wave is going from epicardium to the endocardium right so it is going so for example this is epicardium and endocardium so this is negative then first this will become negative that is epicardium will become negative and then this will become negative so as you can see the negative wave is going inside okay so this this will become relatively positive if this when this cell is negative this will become relatively positive so what happens in repolarization it gives a positive wave because of this phenomenon okay so normally repolarization wave should be negative but because it is a reverse direction it is going the negative wave basically the negative wave is going away from the electrode the surface electrode that's why the repolarization wave that is the t wave that we'll discuss is positive okay it is going away from the electrode simple if a wave if a positive wave is going towards the uh, electrode or towards the limb lead, towards the lead okay it will give a positive wave if a repolarization wave uh, repolarization wave is going towards the uh, lead it will be negative but here the repolarization wave is going away from the lead okay if suppose there is a v5 lead present in, suppose here there is a v5 lead okay the repolarization the negative wave is going here and this becomes relatively positive relatively positive okay you have to understand this concept very important to understand the ecg okay so when this is negative this is relatively positive and that's why 
the ecg the 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 repolarization wave appears as a positive deflection i can't make it simple than simpler than this okay so this i have explained now we'll discuss at one uh, like two leads will discuss okay so you'll get an idea so it, you know conventional ecg as pqrs but it is not always like that it depends on the position of the lead or the electrodes okay so we are going to discuss two leads lead 2 and lead avr okay as you know lead 2 is in the direction of the impulse right it's on the uh, it's the actual direction of the axis of the heart so okay so what happens to the p wave okay p wave i'll explain again p wave is actually atrial depolarization wave so as you can see atrial depolarization occurs from above position to the downward position that is towards the apex okay so for that for lead 2 that is a positive wave because that direction of the wave okay that direction of atrial depolarization it's is is towards the lead 2 so it will be a positive wave okay but as you know avr is present here this is the right side of the heart this is the left side of the heart okay so avr i told you is in the direction of the uh, right arm okay and this is the lead 2 this is the right arm avr okay and the uh, the atrial depolarization wave is going towards the lead 2 that is that means it is going away from the lead avr so p wave will be negative in avr okay i hope uh, this is uh, clear to you guys okay now one thing you have to understand there is a uh, there is a negative wave here okay that is q wave as you must be knowing okay so why there is a negative wave okay so this now this after atrial depolarization we are going to discuss ventricular depolarization which is qrs okay but q wave is a negative wave in ventricular depolarization why now why that is a q that q wave is negative that that something we have to understand okay so in iv septum okay this is the right left ventricle this is the right ventricle okay obviously this will be a larger ventricle okay this is rv this is lv and this is ivs so when it reaches the depolarization wave when it reaches into the ivs interventricular septum the depolarization wave goes from left part of the ivs to the right part of ivs so now lead 2 is here lead avr and lead v1 is here okay this is v1 this is avr this is lead 2 so as you can see the depolarization wave in ivs is going away from the lead to away from the v5 v6 lead okay so obviously for lead 2 for lead v, v5 v6 this is v5 okay for those leads it is going to be negative why because in interventricular septum the, uh, the depolarization wave goes from left side to the right side so it is going against this uh, left side leads okay so it will be negative but in avr and v1 it will be a positive wave okay it will be a positive wave now the direction of the depolarization of the ventricle now the depolarization will actually go in the direction of the left ventricle towards the apex so that's why there is a positive wave in lead 2 and negative wave in lead avr okay then there is again one small s wave okay why there is s wave as i told you depolarization after reaching the apex it again go back to the base okay so you, as you can see it is going away from the surface electrodes surface leads like right? lead 2 v5 v6 so that is again a negative wave i hope you are getting my point okay so this is what we call a ventricular depolarization so why there is negative wave why there is positive wave okay you have to understand okay lead avr will move, can can show a positive wave lead avr and lead 1 v1 so avr v1 will be almost opposite of the uh, left side leads like lead 2 lead 5 lead uh, lead v5 v6 v4 okay now there is a t wave which is a positive wave i have already explained it okay why is it positive because the repolarization goes from epicardium that outside to the inside okay repolarization wave means negative wave the inside cell will always be more negative relatively negative uh, inside cell will be relatively more negative than the outside cell so that means the negative wave is going inside so positive cell is outside that's why it's a positive wave okay i hope i am clear this is repolarization t wave i could not have made clearer than this okay so i have explained you this lead uh, two leads are important to understand this this avr and v1 will always be showing opposite uh, opposite waves than left sided leads okay now you have to understand how the waves are named okay so obviously p wave is atrial uh, 
polar atl depolarization so there is no rocket science here okay so now after p wave we have to decide whether the wave is negative or whether the wave is positive deflection i want to because okay so first negative wave after p wave after p wave first negative wave is called as q or q small q and second negative wave is called s as you know p q r s so first our first negative wave is uh, after p wave is called as q wave second negative wave in the normal ecg also is known as s wave now first positive wave is what in p q r s is r so first positive wave will be known as r or small r and second positive wave will be no wave will be known as r dash or r dash this is seen in abnormal conditions uh, i'll explain in the next video so is it clear first negative wave after p wave is q wave first uh, second negative wave is s wave positive wave first positive wave is r wave and second positive wave is r dash so how, when do you use the small letter case that is something i want to point out here the small letter case will be used when the amplitude is less than 0.5 millivolt okay i hope this is clear so if the amplitude of q wave is less than 0.5 ev uh, 0.5 mv will use the small q wave okay i hope this you understood this now this is the normal duration that you have to uh, you have to understand p wave is around 0.12 uh, seconds okay that will be around uh, the 3 Three square, small square, uh, small boxes. PR segment is 0.05 to 0.12. PR interval is 0.12 to 0.2. That is three to five small boxes. Okay, you can remember as a small box, or you can remember as a second. QRS is 0.06 to 1. QT interval is 0.3 to 0.4. Okay, and ST segment is 0.08. Now this is amplitude. Okay, P wave is around 0.25 millivolt. So for P wave amplitude and duration both are important. okay that we'll discuss again when we'll, we'll discuss our uh, right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement r wave is 1.6 millivolt q wave has to be 25% of r wave if it is more than that then it becomes abnormal it is seen in myocardial infarction just uh, baseline and t wave is 0.52 0.1 to 0.5 millivolt okay whatever however you want to remember you can remember this okay so as you can see this is the normal ecg okay this is a p wave atrial depolarization ventricular depolarization so whenever there is ventricular depolarization atria is repolarizing but because ventricle is so strongly depolarizing depolarizing we cannot see the uh, atrial depolarization st segment j segment so here i want to point out something that the phase 1 i have discussed this uh, action potential of cardiac myocytes in my previous video phase 1 is a phase of depolarization so phase 1 is depolarization it coincides with qrs complex okay phase 2 is a phase of plateau it coincides with st segment st segment is an isoelectric segment okay you have to understand okay and phase 3 is a repolarization ventricular repolarization it coincides with t wave okay so this is something you have to understand okay now there are intervals and there are se uh, segments PR interval it starts from the uh, starting of the P and ends at the starting of the Q. So from starting of the P to the starting of the Q is actually actually it is PQ interval but it is named as PR interval. Okay, then there is QRS it contains or uh, it actually represents ventricular depolarization QRS interval. QT interval is from the start of the Q wave to the end of the T wave. It is a uh, it is a combination of depolarization of the ventricle and repolarization of the ventricle. So that's what it uh, signifies. Okay. and there is something called j point j point is where the s wave ends and the st segment starts okay so it is a junction between s wave and st segment okay this j point is very important to see the early changes of myocardial infarction and few uh, few diseases like hypothermia and all that we'll discuss later on. okay so i hope this is clear now we have to just one more thing we have to learn is how to calculate heart rate to calculate heart rate you have to see the rhythm of the strip rhythm of the ecg okay if it is regular or irregular if it is regular you have to count the number of the small boxes okay between two rr intervals or large boxes between 
to RR intervals. Okay, this is n, this is large n. In this, you have to divide 1500 by uh, sorry, 1500 by small n, and here you have to divide 300 by large n. Okay, simple. If it is irregular rhythm, the whole ECG is of actually 10 seconds. So in that 10 seconds, how many RR intervals are there? Okay, that suppose it's number x. Okay, so you have to divide, multiply x into 6. This will be your heart rate in irregularly, irregular rhythm. Irregularly means RR interval are not regularly spaced. This is one RR interval. Okay, this is another RR. This is bigger than this. So that's irregular rhythm. You cannot now count the numbers because the numbers of number of small boxes and large boxes will change. Okay, so you have to count the number of RR intervals in the on the whole ECG. That is up to 10 seconds and you have to multiply by 6. Okay. So this is a normal ECG, we'll discuss little bit about it. Uh, what you have to see ECG, first you have to see P wave, okay, it's interval, it's, uh, uh, it's amplitude and uh, is it normal or is it abnormal, okay, then you have to see PR interval, PR interval, why is it important, we'll discuss when we'll discuss uh, diseases, okay. Then you have to see, of course, QRS. So each P wave is, we have to see whether each P wave is followed by uh, its QRS. Okay, sometimes some diseases, there is, every P wave is not followed by QRS. So you have to see whether each P wave is followed by QRS or not. Okay, then you have to see ST segment, J point and T waves. Okay, then that is very important in myocardial ischemia and infarction. You have to see the rhythm of the ECG. See, as you can see, this, this is regularly regular. Okay. Because the RR intervals are regularly placed. So when regular rhythm is there, how do you calculate heart rate? So you have to count. These are large boxes. So we'll count the large boxes. It is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 large boxes, that means 300 divided by 4. It will be around 75 beats per minute. Okay. So this is how you calculate heart rate on the basis of the ECG. Okay. So first P, PR interval. If Q, uh, every P is followed by QRS or not, then ST segment, T wave, J, J point. This all you have to see. Rhythm heart rate and uh, also you have to count QT interval. Okay, so these are all important factors that you have to see in ECG. This is this was this video was about normal ECG. In next videos, we'll discuss the diseases that is uh, the, how to diagnose diseases on the basis of ECG cardiovascular diseases. Okay, thank you so much. I hope you like my video. If you enjoy it and if you learn from it, please uh, click the like button, share and subscribe. Thank you.